Yes. Got some bad news. Ooh. In the last video, we got the motor spinning right before Sean had to leave for vacation. In this video, I'll get the motor to drive the back wheel. To make this brief, I'll be skipping the first design iterations that didn't work out. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to more detail as well as the previous video. The first step to drive the back wheel is to mount the motor to the chassis. After taking some measurements of the motor, I designed a plate in Fusion 360. I printed this out at a 1 to 1 scale and used it to trace the cutout into the stainless steel. Using a cutting wheel, it was easy to get an accurate shape. The tough part was drilling a hole for the shaft to fit into. So I just got the quarter inch done. I was kind of off by a good mark and that's the issue I've been having. It's, it's just not fun to drill. I don't know if it's my drill or if it's the bits. I tried using a drill press and despite it not actually drilling all the way through, it did a good enough job. I feel like it needs clamping. <laughs> close. Yeah, it's like hard to, hard to hold. Then came the issue of actually screwing in the bolts to the motor's faceplate. We seem to have another issue. I can't seem to tighten these down any further. I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, seems to be a tiny metal thing right there. I decided to just disassemble the motor to see how I should be bolting it. This is where the little nuts are digging in, or bolts, or nuts. I, I don't even know. And reassembling it took nearly an hour because the brushes were so difficult to get in place. It turns out the bolts were too long and it had to be cut down a bit and everything fit nicely. The entire disassembling was probably unnecessary but I was curious and thankfully the motor spun up just fine when I tested it. To accommodate for the thickness of the motor mount, the angled sides of the chassis needed to be moved outward by about an eighth of an inch. I broke off the tack welds on the chassis and re-welded. I did this to both the top and bottom halves. With some adjustments, everything fit together. Okay, got some bad news. Everything was lining up last night, and so I decided to go ahead and just, you know, fully finish all the tack welds, just so it'd be sturdy. All I had to do was mount the motor, uh, and that was it for the chassis. However, uh, everything's now pretty misaligned pretty badly. I think having just the tack welds allowed more play in the chassis, and now that the parts are rigid, there's no fitting. My new plan was to take the top half, remove the middle brackets, and separate the angle metal to be welded directly to the bottom half. I got to cutting using my cutting wheels, and this happened. I ended up destroying three cutting blades. In the clip, it looks like I'm pushing, but I'm just gliding without any force. And at this point, I was pretty frustrated, so I took a break. Okay, kind of a crazy idea, but I'm gonna try to weld this stainless steel scrap to the sprocket of this wheel. Um, and if it's possible, then that's gonna save me a lot of time, but if not, then not much time wasted, so I'm just gonna give it a go. It turns out I could weld to the sprocket, but I accidentally welded a bit too hot and exposed the bearings, so I'd have to be sure to weld to the teeth next time. Knowing that I could directly weld to the sprocket, I came up with another chassis plan. I plan on connecting this to somewhere over the middle so that we have this space right here to place the battery and motor controller. I plan on mounting this motor on the side right here. The reason I can't have it flush with this side is because it's just so wide. If I wanted it flush on this side, that means the sprocket would be way out here, and then we couldn't drive that wheel over there. I don't know where it is, but we couldn't drive the wheel. We'd have to have the back sprocket way outside. To begin, I cleaned up some of the metal that we had used to practice welding on, so we could use it as the supporting bracket for the motor mount. Once clean, I cut it to length and tack welded it onto the chassis. 
Next, I wanted to mount the square tube that would hold the wheel. I measured just how long the square tube needed to be and cut it. I cleaned up the corners of the chassis to ensure a good weld and used my fancy welding magnet to hold the tube perfectly perpendicular while I tack welded it. I then drilled a hole to fit the wheel's axle. So the motor mount is made of stainless steel and because that is not magnetic, I can't actually use that bracket that I was using earlier. I marked two vertical points on the back of the chassis to align the motor mount and welded it too. In order to drive the back wheel, I needed to attach the right sized sprocket to match the chain and motor. I decided to model up a sprocket mount in Fusion 360 with the necessary bolt holes to accommodate the sprocket we had. Cutting the outer diameter was easy, but the size of the cutting wheel made it difficult to make it all the way through the inside, so I had to use a metal cutting wheel on a Dremel to complete the center. The inside is completely done. Here's a before and after, you can just kind of tell that it it completely ate it away. Once I made sure that the bolt holes aligned, I clamped it onto the back wheel sprocket and tack welded it. All right, so I've got everything mounted and I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, we've got this chain marked right here. I'm gonna have to grind out that uh, little axle, uh, if it'll focus, there we go. I'm gonna have to grind that out punch it out, and then use the master uh, link to uh, hook it back up once it's on the scooter. Here goes in the master link. Come on, it's so close, there we go. All right, everything is plugged in. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. It's a little wiggly. I just would like to uh, do the uh, full tack welding and uh, check out that wiggle, see what's good about that. That's it for part two. Driving the back wheel was probably the biggest obstacle in this project, and now that it's done, apart from some adjustments, it's all downhill. Next video will probably focus on the front wheel as well as housing the electronics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next video.